So welcome everyone to um, our next iteration of our faculty roundtables where we're um, trying to host an informal conversation around uh, what it's like to teach with Lumen's Waymaker program. And uh, today we're going to be looking at this through the lens of our uh, Introduction to Business course. Um, and the general format for today will be, um, we'll do a brief round of introductions uh, for those of us uh, here around the table. Um, and then um, I'll do a brief overview of Waymaker, and the, the general approach of the, the courseware package and, and why um, we're seeing some successes with it. Um, and then I'd like to shift over to Allie, who uh, will give us a brief walkthrough of the course and some of the, the features that Waymaker offers to support student learning and faculty student connections. And then I want to hear mostly uh, from Wendy, uh, who has been teaching uh, with Waymaker this term, um, and uh, get her insights and uh, feedbacks, uh, feedback from her about where students think and, and how she's feeling about it so far. Um, after that, we'll just open it up to, uh, to you know, kind of like in a, a conference round table, um, a casual conversation. Any questions you have for Wendy or for those of us at Lumen, um, we'll just get it going from there. Let's just start with brief introductions of, of those of us who are here. Um, I'll, I'll go first. My name is Jamison Miller. I'm a director of teaching and learning here at Lumen Learning, and I work mostly in the Northeast, but get involved in projects around the country. Um, I am an open education researcher, I'm just finishing up my PhD and started working at Lumen just this summer. So doing a lot of work on um, working with faculty and how to adopt this. Um, next, uh, let's go counterclockwise around. So we don't have Neil yet, but uh, Wendy, could you uh, introduce yourself? Okay, there we go. I have a new microphone today. I want to make sure it's working. <laughs> Let's see. We're not hearing you, Wendy. <laughs> uh, I'm Allison Phillips, and I'm Lumen Learning's um, course product manager for business courses. Hmm. And my name's Johnny oh, Feld. I'm the VP of partnerships, um, and I'm joined in as well and excited to be here. Now I can hear. Sorry if I was talking all over people. <laughs> <laughs> And then, um, let's see, so all of us on around the table have introduced ourselves. So it looks like we just have um, a small number of participants. I think it's Darina. Do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself as well? Um, this is Darina. I'm from Kinta Community College, and I haven't talked yet with uh, OER, but I'm planning to, so I can hear more. Excellent. Sure, anyone's uh, welcome to introduce themselves. We'd love to hear who's here. Okay, so I also, my name is Dawn Levy. Um, I also teach at Kingsborough Community College, which is part of the City University of New York. Uh, Dorina and I actually teach together in the Department of Business. Um, okay. I've been teaching hybrid courses, and I am piloting my first uh, OER course uh, using the business materials from Lumen this semester. Oh, great. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. Right, and thank you for the opportunity for these uh, kind of uh, informal, you know, touch-ins. These are usually where you get your best, uh, <laughs> your best, best practices. Yeah, exactly. From people who are doing it, that's great. Right. Shall, shall I try again as well? Can if anyone can hear me? That'd be great. Oh, good. Yeah, you can hear me. <laughs> I'm I'm yes, Wendy yes. Wright. Um, looking forward to to interacting with all of you today. I teach for Cerritos College over in Southern California. And I'm heading up the retail management program. We are very immersed in OER and um, online teaching over here. So we are just one class away from the entire retail management certificate being completely um, OER online course books, uh, which is exciting. And um, so I do a lot of teaching online, and I'm excited to kind of share with the experiences that we've had with, with Lumen and the BA100 or the Introduction to Business course with you guys today. Excellent. Thanks, Thank Wendy. You. Hi. I'm Margaret Fate. I'm from uh, Cochise College, and uh, we have started the OER. I've um, done one class, and this will be my second one. 
but a few Excellent. of us are, uh, are starting to use it. Excellent. And which course were you teaching already? Already marketing. Great. Okay. And then this will be a survey of American business, which is a general business class. Sure. So Excellent. I'm excited to uh, learn more about this book. Excellent. Excellent. Glad to have you all here. Thank you. So just a, a brief overview then of uh, uh, Waymaker um, as one of our course delivery platforms. Um, this is based, uh, of course, on the OER content that um, you can uh, access in a couple different ways. But um, what Waymaker is, is it's a, a particular delivery method that um, is embedded seamlessly uh, within the LMS. So students don't have to log into anything else. It's when they log into the course, uh, whether you're in Canvas or Blackboard or D2L, any of these, they, they can log in one time and they'll have um, access not only to the content, but through this kind of interactive and personalized study plan as a way to help them navigate the content and give them some feedback on to where to concentrate their efforts and their studying so that they can uh, have a more robust learning experience. Um, the other motivation behind uh, this platform and its design was to foster connections uh, between the students and the instructor. Um, you know, the, the touch points, the emailing that we maybe always intend to do, um, but never have the time to fully keep up with. There are some templates in place to, and some automation features in place to kind of kickstart some of that communication um, so that you can start to establish those lines uh, with your students. Now the feedback we'll, we've been getting on this is uh, pretty rich. Um, we're doing some analysis of the data coming back um, from Cerritos there, uh, where Wendy is. Um, we've started to get some analysis of um, almost 4,000 students there um, that were taking um, Waymaker courses in 2016. And we saw that um, student throughput was improved uh, by over 20%. Um, overall, um, so that uh, whereas only maybe 55% of students were uh, getting through with a grade of C or better, um, we're starting to see better rates of retention. So the students aren't dropping out or withdrawing um, as much. And uh, they're, uh, the students that do stay are, are maintaining that C or better uh, average pretty well. Um, and uh, so the, the efficacy of this, this format um, is the data showing that it's really, really promising and, and really helping students through. Um, but to get a closer look at exactly what uh, Waymaker looks like with Introduction to Business, I want to hand over the, the screen sharing. Um, so this is Joni, and I'll go ahead and share my screen if that's OK, and demo, because we're kind of sharing machines right here. So I'm just going to kind of jump into the Waymaker resources. Um, are you able to see my screen? Yes. Okay. So this is how our Waymaker, our Waymaker course where, um, integrates with all the major LMS. Um, this one happens to be in Blackboard. We also have, um, it integrates with Canvas, Moodle, D2L as well. Um, and as you come in here, it'll show in Canvas, it'll bring it up as modules. Here in Blackboard, it brings it up as folders. And I'll just dive into one of these sections here. One moment. So in the role of business, in each one there's a study plan for the students, and this is that personalized learning tool for the students. Um, as the students go through, there's a getting started, a dive in, and a finish strong section. And the, um, the getting started has both a why it matters and then it bookends with at the end the putting it together. So it, tell, it gives the students information on um, how, that, how this course applies or what they're learning applies to their everyday life just outside of the courseware. I'll just jump in here for just a minute and show you. This one actually talks about a, um, this has information on the challenge of the course, gives the students a little additional information and goes over the learning outcomes. As they come back to the study plan, there's a show what you know quiz, and this just gives the students a chance to see what kind of prior knowledge they're bringing to the course. After they take this quiz, um, you'll see that the tiles are gray, and it, when they finish with the quiz, it does update that to a, um, one moment. 
it does it update it so that they come up and they can see where the information on the, the quiz brings back. So for the ones that are blue, it shows that they got the quiz questions right for many of them. For the ones that are yellow, it just shows the students where they didn't have any prior knowledge and where they may need to focus a little bit more of their work. This is kind of the center part where the courseware happens. So as the students click into this, you can see that there are different outcomes. Um, it starts out with an outcome. Let me just go into the factors of production. It starts with an outcome and it gives information on the students what they're going to learn. They can click through. These are the reading materials. You'll notice that the materials have a combination of the um, videos in them for some of them. There's simulations in others. It is the basic kind of an e-text as well. But it really does integrate all the information together. If you come down to the bottom and look at the licenses and attributions, it does show what's included in the course. You'll notice that it gives um, whoever authored the material or where the information came from and gives the licensing on it as well. I'm just going to page back up. And then the last part of each section does include a um, self-check that the students can go through. And as they go through, this is non-graded. Um, and just gives them a little information on where they are in the, in the materials. So as they move back into the study plan, after they've been through all of the sections in here, they can go ahead and take the quiz at the end. Once they've taken the quiz, it, it does give them some additional information. It, is a it, it does give them two attempts for each quiz. And once they've taken the quiz, let me just get that information. It does change the, the study plan colors again. So if the student comes in and takes the quiz a second time, the personalized learning does allow them to see where they need the additional work. It doesn't remove the choices from them for the places that they did well, but it does allow them to focus their studies where they do need additional attention there. I'm just going to move back out of this, out of this individual section here. Um, the other piece that comes with this Intro to Business is you'll notice that there are discussion sections for each one. Um, we provide multiple discussions. You can choose to use those or delete them, but they are there for you. Um, there's also assignments that go through them. There are multiple assignments that you can choose to use, um, as well as a number of um, case studies. And I'm going to move back in. Are the all content. these? Hi, could I ask a question about these? Please. Um, let's say that you want to go ahead and use the discussion. Does that correlate to the grade book? Will it put those grades into the grade book once we graded them? Yeah, the discussion? they do. They do. Yeah. It's grade return. Yeah, it's grade return into your grade book, and the quizzes all have grade return. Grade return as well. Um, obviously, there's a there's some case studies that run through the entire course. It's called the salty salty pause case study. Um, you're, we I was out at an institution, and one of the instructors was using that to run through the entire course, and, and because it does uh, give that um, continuity throughout the course, another instructor just wanted to use it in different sections. So there's multiple ways that you can use it, but it does provide a case study that runs through the entire Intro to Business course. So that kind of gives you an overview. There are some very powerful faculty tools in here as well. And what, it, what those faculty tools do is allow the technology to do what it does best. So it does do some messaging to the students based on um, their grade on the quiz and whether they're completing those self-checks. Um, and then there's some additional messaging that goes out as well to uh, the faculty that the faculty can send out that they have the ability to go ahead and customize further as they go out to those students. So I think I'll let um, Wendy talk about those a little bit more as we kind of dive into the questions that we'll ask Wendy. Um, and because she has had a chance to teach with us multiple times, and, it, and she's got some knowledge that she can share with you. So Wendy, I'll just go ahead and start out and ask you to, um, to share a few things. And I'll just prompt you with a couple questions on here. Sure, I'm yeah, happy to do. Do, um, do you want um, me to, are you going to be sharing your screen? I can, if that, I'm using Canva, so it looks a little bit different than what you have here. Okay. Uh, but I'm happy to do that. That's excellent. Let me go ahead and move out and give you the screen share. Okay, so this is what my class looks like. 
Community 100, which is our fundamentals of business class. And you, you wanted me to speak to the, the communication piece of it? Um, yeah, that'd be great to start with, Wendy. And we, and then we you can just share experience, and we can ask some questions that, that um, we've had the faculty ask us as well. So yeah, please go ahead. OK. Um, so when I set up my classes, I did set up those um, like nudge feature, I think is the term for it, that will send the students an email from me that's customized to say what's um, you know, good job or if we need to focus in this area. So in Canvas, I, I, um, I go ahead and, and set that up when I set up my classes. Let's try to find where that is. There we go. Okay. So I go into faculty tools, and then I can see right here it's telling me that a student had some trouble here. And I can uh, reach out to the student and send them a, a personalized message. Uh, there's already some message loaded in there, so I can edit it a little bit, or I can send it as is, and I customized it with my office hours, and, and it'll do that automatically, which is, which is pretty cool. And then the other piece that I like is um, the messaging that goes to students that just depended on how they do on the quizzes. So if they do really well, it'll send them a message that I've pre-programmed and I set it at 80% or better. And I believe it goes, it will send it to them maybe every three weeks. And there's three different messages that I've pre-written. And it'll customize it with that person's name. So it'll say, Norman, great job on that last quiz on legal environment. And I'm really proud of you. Keep up the great work. And it goes to him seamlessly just based on him taking the test and getting that score, which is awesome because they feel like I'm able to provide that feedback on a regular basis for the students that are doing well and the students that are struggling. And it's been really, really helpful. Thank you, Wendy. That's a really nice overview. Um, maybe I'll just start out with a few questions that we've had from other faculty members that you could address. Um, one of the questions that we often get is, um, it's sometimes it's difficult to obviously to switch your course materials over. So the question was, what problems did you want to address in switching course materials? Um, what problems did you have moving into Waymaker from your other course materials? Sure. Well, for us, we were using I was using a book that was getting um, outdated. It was also an an OER book, but because it was OER materials, <coughs> they were out there and they were licensed for us to be able to use them, but they weren't maintained very well by the publisher. And so as the materials became outdated, there was nobody updating that, that book. And uh, so we were trying to fix that. We were, we were seriously considering moving away from OER materials because really running into that every couple of years was going to be a problem, and we didn't want to keep doing that. So when we found uh, Lumen and their, their way that their set up and they've taken that into account and basically have a plan in place to, to keep the materials up to date on a regular basis and we really like the, the quality of the materials themselves. It was a step up from just an online textbook. It has all the interactive features, it has videos and simulations and stuff embedded in it uh, and among many other things. But the biggest piece we were trying to fix was that ongoing issue of, okay, who's going to maintain this? three years so that it stays current and we can use this long term. Excellent. Thank you. Yep. Um, so since you moved over to the new courseware, just some insight on how it's working for both you and your students um, in comparison to what they were using before. Um, how, what kind of feedback have you gotten from them and, and what kind of feedback do you have for us on the course? I think it's been working really well. I mean, the students, the, the quality of the material is, is high, so that's been that's been a definite positive, and uh, it's a more robust um, system than just an online textbook. The material has been updated just since we've adopted it, and we've had it for what three years, I think, and it's been updated. We just had a new version this year, so it has new updated material, which is great. Uh, I think for the students and. Uh, the students have been pretty seamless. You know, you, you kind of show them how to use it, and they're fine. Uh, it's been the faculty members. It takes some hands-on, uh, especially if folks are not as comfortable with um, a more robust 
technol technological system is not terribly complicated, but you have to do a little bit of training and be patient with that learning curve, I think, for, for some of the folks when they first. Excellent. Thank you. So if other faculty members are exploring this course for adoption, what kind of advice would you give them as they're starting to look into the courseware? Uh, I think have in mind kind of what, are, are you looking for fully online classes to adopt this, or do you want to have online and face-to-face? -face? Uh, I think that the human has done a great job of being very responsive to the things, the concerns that we've had. Um, early on, the program was fantastic for 100% online classes, and we needed to be able to also use this material in face-to-face -face classes. And so we were able to work with the Lumen team to develop the additional like PowerPoint slides and in-class activities and things that they were able to provide that to us relatively quickly to make it work for that, too. So I think if you've got folks that are on board with teaching online, it's really seamless with Canvas. My understanding is it's really seamless with Blackboard as well and the other the other programs that the principals are using. Um, and just make sure you, you spend some time learning how to use all these features because it's got some neat stuff in it. Uh, if you don't learn how to use them, though, it might, it, you're missing half of it. Thank you. And let me ask this one more, and then we'll open it up to questions from those joining us as well. Um, what was your experience working with Lumen? You've talked a little bit about our responsiveness. Um, but what was your experience working with Lumen as, it, as compared to what you've worked with other providers? Oh, it, it's been fantastic. I, I had um, a question, a Waymaker related question this morning. I sent an email and by the time I got out of class an hour and a half later I had a response, you know, and, and that, I don't think you get that at too many publishers where you're able to have those personal relationships so soon that's come out and met with our team. Uh, they've offered to come out and help us set up our classes, especially when we're starting to get familiar with it, to help other faculty. Um, it's been incredibly, it's, a, it's been a, a partnership versus just purchasing a, a textbook off the shelf. And I think that's been really great, especially when you're doing something that's a little different than what you may have done before. Uh, that's made it so that we're enthusiastic and excited and able to really embrace it fully. And that's been a big big selling point, I think, uh, on our end to be able to have that. Thank you. Um, if anybody out there, if they have a question, we're happy to field it either through the chat or you could go ahead and unmute your mic and ask Wendy a question, either directly about the course materials or the experience that she's had. Um, is this, is this a well, I have a quick question about the um, yeah, go ahead, please. Well, my, my question was, I'm actually, I'm using the resources currently, and I'm also very useful, and the resources are great. Um, my question is whether the, I'm using the Excel version, is the Waymaker also, does it kind of drop into Blackboard the same way? So I, I think I missed a little bit of that. Yeah, you're, I, th I believe you said you're using um, the, the e-text version or the Candela version, and you're asking about the Waymaker version as well. Is that correct? Correct, how that integrates with Blackboard. Um, so the Waymaker version, as I showed you as we started um, demonstrating, or you can see with the Canvas version, that it does integrate very well with Blackboard. It comes in in those Blackboard folders. and. Um, Wendy, if I can maybe steal the screen share back from you, I can show her the Blackboard for time. Yeah, how do I do that? Or do I need to do anything? Um, I think I can get it. Yeah, you should have hover in the right. There okay. you go. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Perfect. And are you able to see the Blackboard piece on this right now? Yes. yes. Are you able to see this? Okay, thank you. Um, so this is integrated directly with Blackboard or Canvas or D2L or Moodle. Um, with You saw in Canvas it comes in in the um, modules, and Blackboard it comes in in the folders. Um, when you click onto the folders, um, one moment, it has everything integrated in there. You can see the discussion sections are actually set up in Blackboard. So as you grade those, those will go directly into the gradebook. The assignments are set up as assignments. 
in Blackboard. You have grading rubrics there. So um, as you grade those as well, those will have grade return into Blackboard. Um, as the student goes ahead and clicks into the courseware, um, there's no additional sign-on for the student. Um, so it is fully integrated into Blackboard. They're able to see the reading pages. Uh, there's simulations that are included in here. So the text, the assignments, the discussions, and the quizzes are all fully integrated into whatever learning management system that you're using. Uh, can you change Where would I see that section you just asked about how to um, students? Um, we're only getting part of that. It seems like you're... I'm sorry if you didn't hear me about how to... <laughs> Maybe try typing in the chat. I think we might get that a little bit more easily. Wendy, did you want to say something as she's okay. typing that? Oh, sure. I was just going to mention that the, the primary difference is we use some of the some of the courses I teach are using the Candela library uh, materials, and then we have a couple that are using Waymaker. And I think one of the biggest differences is in Waymaker you have those trigger points with the quizzes and the messaging systems that are in place through Waymaker to allow for that additional contact and interaction with the students that you don't get with the Candela. Uh, just the textbook, essentially. We're just waiting for Dawn to finish typing her question in. But yeah, as Wendy says, the Candela version is the e-textbook kind of replacement. With the Waymaker version, you do get that personalized learning tool as well as the faculty tools um, that, are, that are so powerful connecting with the students. Let's see, Dawn just said, how can I access the screen where I can reach out to students if they haven't been doing well um, on the quizzes? So you access that screen, you'll get a uh, message um, in your email that says you have students that are trying but struggling. Um, and then as you come into Blackboard or Canvas, um, one moment, let me back out here. In the Waymaker faculty tools, you'll see that, and let me pull up this. When you come in, it'll show you that you have students that are trying but struggling. And here, there's three students that are trying but struggling, and then it just tells you exactly how to take action. If you click on the Take Action button, it takes you into the templated message that you can review and go ahead and send out, um, make any changes that you'd like before sending it out. Great. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, if you wanted to change the point system for each, let's just say, a quiz or a discussion, can you do that? Wendy, I'll go ahead and let you take that if you're comfortable with that since you did the teaching part. Yeah, um, yeah definitely. Yes, you can. Um, the, I actually did that this semester because I wanted to weight my quizzes. This is a face-to-face -face class, weight them less, uh, fewer points, and have midterms and that sort of thing. So you can. You would just go in uh, to edit the assignment, the same place, or edit the quiz, the same place that you would go to set the due date and, and those elements of it, and you can change the point value there for the quiz overall or for the assignment oh. overall. Okay. I see. Okay. And that would be in the edit. Yeah, in the edit. Yeah, anything that you can typically do in your learning management system, like move things around or change point values, um, you can still do that with the Waymaker course row as well. I think that the biggest, okay. from a testing perspective with um, Waymaker, it's been a little harder to get the, the quiz questions out if you want to write an exam separately. That part is a little... Uh, it works really well if you're having them take all their quizzes online. If you want to do a paper Tiantron kind of exam, um, that I think that still needs a little massaging to be able to, to do that easily. Right now it's kind of a lot of copying and pasting. And um, does this book have a test thing? Um, I believe the question was, does it come with a test bank? And it does. The tests are all included in there. But if you click into the faculty resources as well, 
Um, the quiz banks are right here for you. Okay. And you have the online answer keys as well that you can use. And um, so you can pull those up and do that. You can also edit all of the quizzes in here as well. And one moment, let me just click into those. As you click into one of the modules that you're interested in editing the quizzes, and you go into the study plan, and any of them that have gears up there can be edited. So you can edit within the study plan. You can actually remove um, full tiles if you don't teach those portions, and you can remove the quiz questions for those as well. And then you can also edit the quiz questions directly in the module. For some reason, we're having I'm having trouble getting into this to edit them. But usually, it just there's a drop down and it just says quiz, and you go in there and you get the full list of all the quiz questions, and you can make any edits or changes on those that you'd like. Um, you can go ahead and um, delete one out, or you can change it so that it, it more closely aligns with your student learning outcomes. Wendy, have you, you done any of that? Or maybe talk about some of the editing or the changes that you've made with the Waymaker so it will more fit, uh, closely fit your teaching style? I haven't edited the quiz questions very frequently. Um, I've, I've edited, I've, I've removed some items just because we have a ton of uh, assignments or discussion boards for each module. So I take, I take those out and I've edited assignments, which is pretty much the same way you would do it in any regular, you know, non-waymaker course. You just go in there and edit, and you can change um, what it says. I haven't done as much with editing the the quiz questions within Waymaker. And how have you maybe manipulated the course so that it really fits your teaching style, maybe other ways that you've done it, or that it was it a nice, easy fit for you as you started? You know, the first, the first time I taught it, I, prob I pretty much went with what was uh, set up just to see how it went. I, very, you know, at the time, there weren't, it wasn't quite as many things as there are there now, so that worked. Um, these days, I go through it and... I like the case study, so I use the, the salty pause case study in my classes. Um, I take out the discussion boards for face-to-face -face classes, and I just talk about those things with my students in class rather than doing them there. I've changed how I do the quizzes almost every class that I've taught it. Um, sometimes I've just done the quizzes as the main testing instrument and at the full point values. Other times I've pulled them out completely and just done face-to-face -face, like Scantron type of quizzes. Um, this semester I've been, I lowered the point value, and have been using those quizzes as a, a tool to help them prepare for the midterm. And then I pulled some questions off of those quizzes and put them on their midterms as well. Uh, I've also done them as an edit. What's been the main thing? Excellent. Thank you, Wendy. Any, any other questions? Yeah. Any other questions for somebody asking a question? Is there a way to actually search the quiz materials for the um, level of difficulty of the questions? So there's not a way to see the, the level of difficulty on the questions with the quiz materials. There's, um, there's not. Wendy, how have you addressed that, or how, what, what have you found with the leveling of the quiz questions? Have you had any issues with uh, it? I or that the ones that are the... the yeah, they, I mean, they don't really indicate different levels. I've kind of just eyeballed it based on what I think is going to be more difficult for the students. I think it's wrong with that. They do seem to move up. So the ones, the questions that are embedded within the content, um, and then I, I think the the quiz questions are mirrors of it. They're they're basically re rewording of very similar questions, so they're comparable. I, I did notice there's some essay questions in the faculty resources that go a little bit more in depth and I think are a little bit more difficult than the, the ones that are in the quizzes. Okay. 
Thank you. One, one, thing, one thing I think what you'll see with the quiz questions as well is that um, I, th I think it's not so much the quiz questions themselves, but the content. When we look at the content, the more difficult areas of the content for the students, um, I, I think a lot of those quiz questions obviously are going to be a little bit more difficult for the students. So with the content, we do do a lot of learning science with our courses, and we've learned that students really learn by doing. So we do find on those parts that are more difficult that we do add additional um, interaction within the course. And I think Wendy's seen a lot of our iterations as we've moved through it. Um, I know with the, um, the first time we ran the information, the hardest modules for students were supply and demand and elasticity. And so as we made sure that all those questions were aligned with the courses to make sure we were asking that with correct alignment, that the content was good, we also realized that for the supply and demand modules, that's the first place that the student was going to hit graphing with economics. And if they weren't, right. if they didn't get graphing, they were going to fail first in supply and demand, and then continue to fail throughout the whole um, course. And same thing with elasticity; it was the first place they actually had to do math and economics. So again, if they're going to fail doing their math, it's going to be there first, and then throughout the rest of the course. So the iteration that we did is we came up with some additional modules that really speak to the student about. Um, let me jump in there about the graphing and economics as well as the um, using math and economics. So we now have an extra um, an extra piece in there for the economics um, that adds to that piece. So we do something similar for the for the intro to business as we find places that students really struggle and that those are difficult parts. We try and add additional interaction for the students or give them additional practice in order to prepare themselves to be ready for those quizzes. It's funny you bring that up because the first time I taught with this material, that section on supply and demand was a struggle. They really struggled. And this last time we went through it, and they had done the, some, read the material, and they did the different exercises in the course. And then we went through it in class, and I, I was anticipating, you know, okay, I'm going to really kind of fine tune and take, slow it down and work with them individually if need be. And they got it so much faster. I think the materials were really um, supported that. And we've been talking a lot about the learner mindset and introducing that at the beginning of the, of the course, especially the Waymaker courses. And so we talk about that a lot. And it seems like the students are starting to get on board with practice uh, and, and doing those things. That's great to hear, Wendy. Yeah, you'll notice in the supply module that we know a place that they really struggle, that there is there are additional videos in there. There's a simulation that actually um, works with the food truck. It takes a minute to load, so we'll just give it a minute to load. But it's a branch simulation that allows the students to really explore it and ask some questions. They get some background, and then they make decisions. And based on those decisions, it branches them off into different paths. Um, they have the ability to do it more than once if they decide to take a different, um, different choice. But we really do, where they're struggling more with that information, we um, try and give them additional interaction with that. Any other questions for Wendy? Do you, um, Wendy, go over the assignments that are purely done on the Waymaker and reference them back in class? Do you find you have time to do that? Uh, yes, I usually do. Uh, the first time I taught with this, I, I kind of let them just, the homework was the homework, and they did it on their own. And I have found it definitely has been working better to start to go over it in class I don't necessarily have to complete the whole thing, but I explain it and just talk through it, and then they do it at the homework on their own. And then I also balance it out with doing some of the homework I do as in-class activities. I tend to do, um, I try to balance my courses between lecture and and doing stuff. So it's probably at least 50-50 of, of doing, having them do hands-on things in class, and it seems to work pretty well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, one other question was whether students have commented to you that they're reading more because they have easier access to the materials. Have they have they said that to you? Have they expressed that? Uh, you know, I asked them on the first day of class. I do an initial survey of all the students to make sure that they have uh, regular, reliable internet access because they they absolutely need to have that. Because I did run into a student. Um, last year, who was um, homeless, really, and 
And so he didn't have regular access. And so I ended up printing out some materials for him and kind of working with him in that way. Uh, but for the most part, they've, they've been able, a lot of them will read it on their phone. So, and I, I believe mm -hmm. um, we use Canvas, and it's really user-friendly on the phone, so that works out okay. I haven't run into too much trouble with that. They have their materials and be able to read them. Whether or not they choose to is, you know, up for some debate. But okay. they, they seem to be able to get to it and, and have it with them on a regular basis. I think having it on their phone because they have their phone with them all the time works out well. Right. Great. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll turn it over to Jameson to kind of close things up. Um, Wendy, super helpful. Thank you so much for participating and sharing with us. Um, it really, it's, we've had a lot of reaction from faculty that really wanted to speak to the faculty teaching and understand how they're using the course. So really appreciate your feedback and the time um, that you spent with us today. Can I just ask one quick question? <laughs> yes, um, could Absolutely. you show us the grade book, please? Oh, for me? Does Allison do Well, no, let's not, let's not, let's not do your grade book, Wendy, because that's your student. We're not hearing you, so, so if you uh, want to go ahead and perhaps, type that uh, in, we're happy Joni to read it out. Joni, if you click through over to the, uh, the grade book there and the Blackboard demo. Um, no, I'll have Wendy go ahead and demo that, because she's more familiar with it, but let me go ahead. Um, I, I do, maybe if you ask what you're interested in seeing for the grade book, we do want to make sure that we don't show um, live students from Wendy. Um, um, that, do you have some specific questions for I'm Wendy about the grade um, book? I guess if the study plan and the discussions, all that is in the grade book, I guess the total points as it is now, just kind of getting a feel for what the grade book would look for in this in this class, how many points, and what it consisted of. Um, let me see. Wendy, do you have something you can let me just talk about it? I, I can. Do say you have something you can show that doesn't expose the life students, or do you want to just talk about it? A quiz or a discussion? Then. Uh, the blackboard once it's published, then it shows up in your gradebook automatically. And whatever point value you set it to, that's what's going to show in your gradebook. So for the most part, I've left them at the default mm -hmm. rate. So for the defaults are 20 points for each quiz, I think 25 points for assignments, and I believe I don't use the discussion quite as frequently. I want to say 10. 10 points for discussion, but I could be mistaken on that one. And then they have a quiz for every chapter, so what, 15, 15 modules, 15 chapters. But again, they're, it's completely customizable. So if you want something else more heavily weighted, all of the gradebook features that you have and whatever your LMS is, those remain intact. So if you want to weight things differently or um, anything like that, you can do that. It just integrates okay. so that as you grade things, if you, as you publish the assignment, quiz, or discussion, it'll show up in your gradebook, and it'll put in whatever point you, whatever point value you want it to be. Okay. The cases. Now you um, you use that case, and so do you associate the grade with the with the case? Um, sure, because the case for the this course, it's a it's a case study at the very beginning. The the right. selfie pause. And so I usually use that as the first activity when we start the class, is I have them read that, and we talk about, first and foremost, what is a case study, and kind of go through it. And then the, the assignments, you have the choice when you get to each module. So if you're, for example, we just finished up the legal environment chapter. So for that chapter, I can choose whether I want to have an assignment that's just a, a separate assignment. It's not necessarily tied into the case. Or I can choose to do an assignment using the material from that chapter and relating it to the case. So I chose to use the assignment that related it to the case. So it's just the way the question is asked, just the way the assignment is written. So rather than just being generic, it'll say, um, let's, you know, can you give Wanda as the main person of the choice confuses my students because my name's Wendy and they think it's about me. Uh, 
that Wanda is selling dog treats and um, what are some of the legal issues she might need to be aware of and what are the things, some of the things that she can do to protect her business and provide, and provide some feedback to Wanda based on what you learned in this chapter to help her with her business. And that's the assignment. And then they type that and then you'll be able to see that Correct, and then you physically put that answer in, I mean, that, that grade in? Um, yeah, so they'll, they can type it in a Word document and attach it and submit it online, or mm -hmm. they can type it right into, in Canvas, you have a choice of whether you want to allow them to attach a document or just to enter the text directly into the system. And then what I get is I get a notification um, on the side of my home page that says you have this new assignment to grade, and I can go in there and grade in, we have a um, speed grader. And I think Blackboard has that very similar where you can put your rubric in if you want to, or you can just read it and grade it right there. I like to use rubrics because then it's click, 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 and it's graded and it's all consistent. And then whatever you end up submitting the score, then that score right there where you grade the paper on that same screen, whatever score you put in, it'll automatically drop into the gradebook. The only okay. time you need to enter something directly into the gradebook separately from that would be if you have them turn in something on paper and then you've got to go in and do it yourself. But if you're grading through yeah. Canvas or through Backboard, it just goes right in. Thank you. <laughs> All right, well, I'd be happy to uh, take the screen back. Uh, Joni and Allie, if you want to stop your screen sharing. Great. So, yes, thank you, uh, Wendy, for your, your insights and um, what you got there for. For those of you who want to, to follow up or uh, a little bit more, we will be sending out the slide deck uh, after the, the fact so that these uh, links to further resources, um, our website, the course content, um, how to sign up for our uh, online discussion collaboration forum, the community Slack. Um, we also have a request for more information form as well as uh, access to the faculty resources. So you can access all that further information. If uh, you or your colleagues uh, are interested in seeing a roundtable that's on some different content, like based in statistics uh, tomorrow uh, with David Sinsky from Erie Community College, or on Wednesday, uh, we have several faculty who will be discussing their use of our English Composition One Waymaker course. Um, please spread the word, and you're welcome to attend those as well. Um, and for any follow-up uh, from this, you can always reach out to either Joni uh, or myself, and we'd be happy to answer any other questions that you have. But again, thank you all for coming, and uh, look forward to hearing from any of you. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy.